Would you believe that decades ago, the list of lymphedema precautions from the American Cancer Society included hold your cigarette in the non-involved hand. Now, based on what we know today, it sounds pretty ludicrous, doesn't it? Thankfully, with clinical experience, clinical trials, and research, medicine and healthcare continuously learn and evolve. So when it comes to the lymphedema precautions that we all know, here's the background. Most, if not all of the lymphedema precautions were developed decades ago, and not by sound science or research, but by conventional wisdom, and they have been propagated over the years simply by habit. Don't sleep on that side. Don't carry a purse. Don't wear jewelry. Wear a sleeve if you fly. No blood pressures. No needle sticks. Don't lift over 10 pounds. Don't exercise. Don't garden. Don't get hot. And don't strain. Well, as it turns out, none of those are accurate. I'm cancer physical therapy specialist, Dr. Leslie Walke. Welcome to The Recovery Room, a question and answer platform specifically for cancer patients and survivors. We are now going to discuss the physiological and research-based lymphedema precautions that you should be adhering to if you've had lymph nodes removed from your underarm or your groin. The top three things you can do to minimize your risk of lymphedema are, number one, minimize your risk of getting an infection in that arm or leg. Number two, maintain or get to a healthy body weight. And number three, make sure that that arm or leg and the area around where the lymph nodes were removed is strong and flexible. Before we take a closer look at these three things, let's review why you are at risk for lymphedema in the first place. The main culprit for lymphedema is the loss of the lymph nodes during surgery. And this can be compounded a bit by radiation to the same area. This creates a baseline risk for lymphedema. Now this risk is lifelong, but it does decrease slightly over time. Most lymphedemas, though not all, will usually happen in the first five years after surgery. The most common precipitator of lymphedema is infection. So the number one way you can reduce the risk of lymphedema is by minimizing your risk of getting an infection in the arm or leg associated with where the lymph nodes were removed. Most of these infections will come in the form of cellulitis. If you want to learn more, please go to the Recovery Room Facebook page or to our YouTube channel and look in the video library for our video on cellulitis. The skin being broken or damaged in a, limb, in a limb with fewer lymph nodes to protect it can lead to getting an infection. Minimizing your risk of infection, though, does not mean stop doing the things that you love. It means protect your skin from scrapes, scratches, burns, bites, etc. while you are doing the things that you love. If and when you do injure your skin in any way, you should keep the area clean. As it heals, if it looks more red than it should, or it does not heal as you expect, call your doctor or nurse right away. The second most common precipitator of lymphedema is gaining weight or being overweight. If you are gaining weight after cancer treatment or are overweight, talk with your cancer doctor, physical therapist, and dietitian to get you on a plan to gradually decrease your body mass index. A healthier weight will help your body in many ways, including decreasing your risk for lymphedema. And number three, research has shown that people who return their arm or leg to full strength, full flexibility, and full range of motion have a decreased, of risk, decreased risk of lymphedema. Movement, muscle contractions, and exercise all propel lymphatic fluid. So a strong, flexible arm or leg will have a stronger and happier lymphatic system. If you are having issues with weakness, skin tightness, or stiffness in the area where you had lymph nodes removed, please see your cancer physical therapist to have it addressed. It is never too late to make it better, even if it has been years since your cancer treatment. 
So the evidence-based lymphedema precautions are minimize your risk of infection, get to or maintain a healthy body weight, and make sure your involved arm or leg is 100% strong and flexible. Now notice that the evidence-based precautions do not include avoiding blood pressures or sterile needle sticks that you would get in a physician's office or hospital. Those, though these inaccurate precautions have been pounded into your head and pounded into the heads of healthcare workers, there is no evidence blood pressures or sterile needle sticks cause lymphedema. So avoiding them then is of no benefit. However, these precautions are deeply ingrained, so it will most likely take a long while for them to fade away. But next time a healthcare worker or fellow cancer survivor says, you shouldn't have blood pressures or blood draws in your involved arm, you can now say, did you know that those precautions are not valid and not supported by research? You are now on the cusp of medical advancement. I'm Dr. Leslie Walkie, signing out from the recovery room. Let's talk again soon.